All right, why are we looking at John Sable Freelance by Mike Grell, February 1986 by First Comics out of Chicago, Illinois? Well, there's leprechauns down here at the bottom. And Sergio Aragonez. Hi, I'm Darren, these are my hands, and this is GruTube, where we appreciate the art of Sergio Aragonez. Yes, today we've got John Sable Freelance by Mike Grell with leprechauns by Sergio Aragonez. So the question is, why John Sable Freelance on GruTube this week? Well, this comic is about a freelancer of two sorts. You see, John Sable is a freelance writer of children's stories, but he's also a freelance mercenary. He's a soldier of fortune, a hired gun. Writing kids' books? That's just his cover. John Sable, written and illustrated by Mike Grell. And you might recognize that the colorist is Janice Cohen, known for her many color jobs on Gru the Wanderer comics, when Tom Luth needed a break. And in this particular issue, John Sable is taking his associates to Los Angeles to meet up with an illustrator who will be cartooning the animations for one of his children's books that's being turned into a cartoon. And who is this illustrator? Why, none other than, um, Sukio Aerogenes? Check out that mustache. Well, John Sable figures that, you know, like most of these cartoonists, he's going to be short and dumpy, but that's not the case. Mr. Aerogenes is handsome and suave, and man, check out that mustache. Anyway, John Sable and his crew meet with said illustrator to check out the storyboards that he has prepared for the children's cartoon. And this is where we transition from Mike Grell's illustrations to something that looks a lot more like our Sergio Aragonez stuff. The story is being told of a leprechaun hideout in Dublin, Ireland during the Great Potato Famine and how a trio of misfit leprechauns are kicked out of the colony. The name of the story is Cave of the Half Pints, animation by Sergio Aragonez, voice characterization by Stan Sakai, cell painting Janice Cohen. It's kind of like we've got a miniature version of the Gru crew here for the story about miniature leprechauns. And what's great about this comic, let's count it up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six. 27, 28, 28 pages, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Out of the 28 pages of illustration, 22 of them are by Sergio and crew. That's almost 80% Sergio Aragonez. So I'd like to share this comic with you today. We're not going to go too deep into it. We're going to look for hidden grooves and anything else that Sergio may have snuck in here. And I'm going to give you a, an overall look at the story and point out some of the really nice drawing. So the story starts out with us being introduced to three leprechauns, Grog O'Leary, Dusty Cruster, and O'Leary being kicked out of the leprechaun colony. But instead of panicking, and maybe after a little bit of fisticuffs, they come up with a plan to board a ship to America and start their own leprechaun colony there. I think it's neat how leprechauns can shapeshift. Is this crusty? Is this dooley? Turns into a little dog and scares off this cat. But come on, you've got to know that when Sergio is drawing a comic strip featuring ships crossing the ocean in the olden days, you're going to get some great looking drawing here. Check out those ropes. How do you even draw those things without it just being second nature to you? But to Sergio, he just comes in. Beautiful looking stuff. And of course, the ships are amazing as well. 
Check out that rigging. Beautiful. So our friends the leprechauns are in the hold of the ship where they meet this guy. Far Derek. Kind of looks a little bit like Santa, but he's leprechaun sized. Now, Far Derek is kind of like cousin of the leprechaun, but he's a trickster, even more so. He's a bit deadly, perhaps. But instead of getting in a fight with them, cooler heads almost prevail, and our leprechauns leave the Far Derek alone. Checking out the upper decks, we get another look at the beautiful ships. Now, we know that Gru's not on the ship, because if he was on the ship, it would sink. Oh man, that's beautiful. And soon enough, our leprechauns and the Far Derig arrive in New York City. This here is just a classic Sergio drawing. The crowd scene, the hustle, the bustle. Now you might be thinking, if Tom was coloring this, there'd be so much color detail on the people in the scene. But maybe Janice was thinking, we need to set Far Derig apart here. And so we give some more flat colors to the background. I do think it's effective. Well, the leprechauns find a place to start their own, I don't know, would you call it a colony? And I think what we learn is that this place becomes Central Park. One of the first things they do is they set up their still so they can brew their, well, they call it potine, poutine. This is not French fried potatoes, gravy, and cheese curds. This is a strong, potent drink. Check out over here. Drip, drop. They get a little bit of it into the flasks of the city planners who have a wonderful time and decide to set this area apart for Central Park. If I was a more cultured person, I could tell you the name of the painting that Sergio is riffing off of here. But I can't, so we'll just have to enjoy the beauty of it without knowing what it's called. We learn that our leprechaun friends are shape-shifting into animals and stealing potatoes so that they can brew their putin, poutine, potin. But one day, one of them gets caught by a shoeshine boy. He's a pretty small guy compared to the size of the leprechaun. And what happens? He takes him to the leprechaun colony. And we learn that during this time, the far Dereg has been working on his own potions. A potion that will turn a mere mortal into an immortal leprechaun. They administer this potion and grow their colony. And we learn of all the various folks that the leprechauns have invited to join them by turning them into their own kind. Check this out. La 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 la. Oh, oh, excuse me. I, I dropped a few Smurfs on my comic here. I, I don't know how that happened. Smurfs. 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 Some folks tried to join the colony, but were never admitted at all. And yes, I took a very close look in these crowd scenes to see if I could find anything that was Gru-like. I could not find a Gru. Maybe you've got better eyes than me. And if you see a Gru in these pages, please let me know. So that is the story of how the leprechauns that were banished from the colony in Dublin started a leprechaun colony in the Americas. And meanwhile, in John Sable life, he is happy with the work that Mr. Aragonez has done. And apparently one of his colleagues is happy with the mustachio illustrator's hospitality as well. So there we have John Sable Freelance number 33 featuring the artwork of Sergio Aragonez. And hey, look at this little mustachioed fella. I wonder if Sergio was trying to sneak himself onto the cover in leprechaun form. You know, I was really surprised looking at this comic book to not find any hidden grues or secret drawings from anything in the Gru universe. I'm really surprised that Sergio did not sneak anything in here. In fact, I'm more surprised that he didn't sneak something in here than I would have been if I would have found a hidden Gru in this comic. I looked pretty close, but maybe I missed something that you've seen. And if you did see something, please let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts on John Sable Freelance, the Leprechaun issue featuring artwork by Sergio Aragonez. Leave a comment below. Tell me what you think. 
Be sure that you're subscribed and that you have the bell turned on for notifications because I don't want you to miss it when I'm back next time with another GrooTube. Take care, everybody. Now, is there any grooves hidden here? Any grooves in the machinery? Any grooves on the shelf? In the lab?